In my book on modern software engineering, I wrote that one of the foundations on which software development is built is learning. By this I mean a lot more than that we have to learn how to do it before we do it. I mean that learning is at the very heart of everything that we do in software development. So how do we do that? How do we optimise for learning? And how do we become expert at learning if that really is at the heart of our discipline? That's our topic for today. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery and welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content here today, hit like as well. When I wrote about learning being a pillar of our discipline, I was talking about it as being a pervasive essential aspect of all that we do. The economics of software mean that in our own local context, we are always creating something new. Because if we're not doing that, we're being stupid because software and other digital assets have a property that is unique to them. We can recreate them perfectly for essentially zero cost. So if we can perfectly recreate anything that we already have for zero cost, then what would be the point of paying people to repeat that thing? So the only time that software development makes sense is when it's doing new things, or at least revisiting old things with a new perspective. So it's always an exploration of new ideas in some way. This means that learning is an absolutely fundamental part of the game of software development. We learn enough to understand the problem we are working on. We learn enough to believe that our solution, whatever we choose, will solve that problem. We learn what our users really want and we try to deliver it to them. And we learn how to make our solution scalable, resilient and all of the other things that matter to us in our context, whatever they might be. All of this is new and different for each system that we build. So learning is ongoing and constant. Our job is problem solving. Software is the tool we use to solve the problems. And so learning is the other tool that we need to be able to wield to be good at software development. My book lists five fundamentals that are, are essential for learning. But I'd like to explore this first from a more personal, less process technical perspective. As well as structuring our software development process to facilitate learning, individually we need to be good at it too. Let me pause there and say thanks to our sponsors. We are fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts and Transfig. Equal Experts is a multinational consultancy built on applying the ideas and techniques that we talk about here to build great software for their clients. Transfic is a fintech company applying advanced continuous delivery techniques to deliver low latency trade routing services to some of the biggest financial institutions in the world. These companies offer products and services that are extremely well aligned with the topics that we discuss here every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering, click on the links in the description below and check them out. There's a lot of academic and pop psychology advice out there. Try asking ChatGPT about or Googling for learning to learn. There's some interesting stuff here, but that's not really my area of expertise. So instead, of going into that, I thought that I would give you my take on what I have learned about my own learning style and what seems important to me in the context of learning to learn specifically to get better at software development. I think that what we really seek through learning is understanding, not merely the accretion of a collection of facts, but it's a common mistake to confuse the two. Software developers and the software industry too often and too easily fall into the accretion of facts trap. Think of the job adverts that provide a list of technologies and skills that candidates must possess. Think of the developers that as a result seek up to pad their CVs with saleable technologies or see their expertise only in terms of the things that we can usually look up on Stack Overflow while ignoring the more fundamental things that would make them better developers. Merely collecting facts is focusing our learning on the wrong things. I think that a programmer who understands problem solving can better organise their thoughts, their work and adapt to learn new technologies to reliably solve problems that they haven't seen before. Programmers like this are much more valuable as teammates than programmers who have used the latest cool language or open source tools. Or one who can list all of the services of Azure, AWS or Google Cloud. The first programmer has understanding 
and the mental tools and strategies to find the necessary facts. The second has only the facts. If you'd like to take your learning beyond lists of facts and focus more on the stuff that really works, check out my training courses. We've got a summer sale on at the moment and for the rest of this month you can get 20% off any course. Knowing that the target of our learning is therefore important, vital maybe. One of my inspirations in thinking about my own learning, someone that helped me to understand better how I want to be able to learn, is physicist Richard Feynman, and maybe Richard Feynman's dad. In his book, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, he tells the story of going for a walk with his dad when he was a boy. His dad said, see that bird? It's a brown-throated thrush. In Spanish, it's a zorsal de garganta parda, and in French, it's a grive à gorge brune. You can learn all of the names of all, in all of the languages and you still know nothing about the bird. It's not enough to only know the names for things or to only know the lists of tools and techniques. We need to understand how to wield our knowledge, how to put it to use. And that means that we need to have a model for how things work. We need to understand. So building understanding is the real goal of our learning. I think that changes how we think about it and how we organise things to achieve it. For example, in most of the best places that I have worked, certification in software has had a very bad name. To the extent that in those places, the people who proudly claimed to be Java or Microsoft or whatever else certified, viewed with some kind of suspicion. There was an inbuilt assumption, wrongly or rightly, that there was an inverse correlation between certification and the competence as a software developer. Now this is almost certainly overly harsh. But it's also a big problem because if learning really is so important to our discipline, and it is, then how can people who are good at it be disdainful of people who are trying to learn? I spent a while thinking about this seeming contradiction and now I think this comes down to this difference between understanding and the much less valuable accretion of facts. One of the difficult parts of teaching things is how do you measure success? It's much easier to test people's recall of facts rather than to test their understanding of a topic. At LMAX, where I used to work and led a team building a high performance financial exchange, I used to do the final interview for all developers along with my friend Martin Thompson. Our interview style was probably unusual because we were actively trying to avoid asking the kinds of questions that only had right answers. We were instead trying to assess what we believed was a deeper truth about the capabilities of our candidates. We were trying to assess their understanding because that is a much more powerful tool for solving problems in software than any fact-checking of their knowledge of the intricacies of obscure corners of a language or framework. It's not that these intricacies are unimportant, but they are poor measures of success for software developers. They don't say anything about how good this developer is at solving problems with software, which is, after all, what our job is. The problem for certification is that understanding is so much more difficult to evaluate, so the certifiers often don't try. Instead, they measure the stuff that's easy to measure, and even worse, they often structure their courses to teach the stuff that's easy to measure instead of the stuff that makes people better software developers. This is a terrible mistake because while understanding often leads to a thorough understanding of tools and techniques, a thorough knowledge of tools and techniques doesn't always or even mostly lead to understanding. So how do we build that understanding? I think that the most important thing, and again, this is something that Feynman helped me to understand better, is to construct and maintain a mental model of what it is that's going on. This is what Martin and I were probably trying to seek in our final interviews. What is this candidate's mental model for how they approach software development? How do they explore problems that they don't yet understand? We used to ask each other, would they take the video recorder apart? This was a kind of code phrase between us because we discovered that both of us had dismantled and then reassembled the first video recorder that we owned to try and figure out how it worked. We both wanted a mental model of what was going on inside. There are lots of mental models that we need. Some of them are general and some are very specific. These models are important because we need to be able to test our ideas and without some sort of model we have nothing to test them against. Our models represent our current understanding. 
and we are really learning when we change one of them. So the idea is that we try out new ideas against our models of how things currently work to see how they stand up. If the new ideas agree with our mental model, we can add them. If they don't, they're challenging the old model and so we'll need to revisit it. Now, either our new ideas are wrong or our mental model is wrong, or I suppose maybe both. In either case, we're learning, but we're learning much more when our ideas correctly show where our model is wrong. Because if we really want to learn at this point, then we need to come up with a new model. We need to change what we already have, validate that everything that worked before still works with this new model and verify that our new idea works too. If you think about this, it's about compartmentalizing our learning into a series of steps. We will increase our opportunities to learn if these steps are small and controlled, which is how we get to my five principles for learning in software engineering. But really, these are generic principles for learning that are implicit to the scientific method. Try stuff out, see what works, discard the things that don't work, and then try more stuff. I think that when we start thinking about learning in this way, it leads us down a path towards genuinely more effective, more valuable kind of learning, and helps us to position ideas much more effectively. In software, this is rarely about some kind of recipe to memorize. It's just not that simple. Where we do have something as straightforward as a recipe of steps, we should automate that. Our job is to apply our understanding by thinking so that we can solve new problems as they arise. And great software development is about making that easy and implicit to the way that we work. Understanding is much more than rote learning. It's about building our own internal models of things. One of the things that Feynman did when he worked on the Las Alamos project to build the first atomic bomb was to bet people that he could solve any problem in 60 seconds that someone could state in 10 seconds. Remember, he was a world-class physicist working with some of the smartest people on the planet. He described the way that he did this like this. He describes here how he'd construct a mental model as the problem was being described which he then used to test out his solutions, running them through his mental model to get an answer. I'd argue that the software that we create is kind of a crystallization of our ideas, our learning, a realization of our mental model. At any given moment, our software represents our current understanding, or at least it should. If the software is disorganized and inconsistent or divergent from our mental model of what's happening, this is a big problem. So treating our software as our best representation of our current understanding is a much more effective strategy than not. We need to maintain several models though of our current system at once. One type of model is an abstraction that represents our high level understanding of how our software works. This is the equivalent of Feynman's differently colored balls with hair. A model that we can play with and run ideas through to try them out quickly and easily. But we also need a precise, accurate model of our solution. This model is the code of our system. It's still a model. And finally, we need to capture the facts that specify what it is that our model is supposed to achieve. This model is best organized as a series of small controlled experiments in the behavior of our system, a specification of what it is that we expect from it. The enormous value of this model is that it gives us a way to try out changes to the other two models to confirm that our models are still consistent with one another. A key facet of successful learning is to keep all of these models in step, consistent with one another. When we do that, progress is easy and fast. When we don't, progress is difficult to the extent that sometimes it stops altogether. To put all of this together, we need theory, skills, knowledge, and an organized way to structure our learning. Working in small steps and evaluating our ideas after each small step is vitally important. Does this still fit? Does it still make sense? Does it still work? We work in ways that allow us to build on the knowledge that we acquire and so grow our understanding, updating our models as we go. We organize our work so that we can control the variables and so more clearly see what works and what doesn't. If we do all of these things, we will certainly learn and grow our understanding and grow the effectiveness of the software that we create too, as well as the effectiveness of our ability to create it. Better software, faster. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoy our stuff here on the Continuous Delivery Channel, please do consider 
supporting us via Patreon. We have a vibrant Patreon community and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our patrons for your support. If you'd like to join us, there's a link for that in the description below too. Thank you and bye-bye.